Hey everybody, I'm Mikey G and I'm here today with Wilson Bickford who's going to show us his wet and wet painting technique. And today we're going to do a painting start to finish using only four colors, is that correct? Yep, we're just going to need the primaries today. Cadmium yellow, cadmium red deep, and cobalt blue and a little bit of white to tint it out. Alright, great. So tell me a little bit about what wet on wet is and what we're going to be doing today. Well, my wet on wet approach uh, hinges on the fact that we're going to put thicker, firmer paints down on the canvas first as a foundation. If you think of it as building a house, you got to have a l nice strong foundation and cellar underneath before you start putting up the stud work and the rafters. So we start out with a really thick, firm paint and that allows us to put subsequent layers on by thinning those next layers down. So we get that layering effect so you can do the whole painting in one sitting and not have to wait for layers to dry. Okay, and obviously, uh, you know, four colors is, is a little less intimidating than 18 on the palette. And uh, we have, uh, I guess, five different brushes and tools here? Yep, yep, just the, this is stripped down to the basics, just the primaries. The primaries, we can get any conceivable color we want. Just a few of these bigger brushes you'll see make the job pretty easy. This is fast and fun painting and that's exactly what it's going to be. Okay, and uh, I saw that you were laying this out here. Now this isn't a color, this is what we're going to use to thin the paint. This right? is a white base coat. There are two formulations of this. One is a typical just traditional oil like you, like you would think of. The other one is an alkyd base which dries a little quicker. I also have some clear medium which is the equivalent of this. There's no pigment in it. It's clear. We use that to thin our subsequent layers down as I talked about before. Well, what are we going to be painting today? Um, one of my personal favorite subjects are sunsets, so I thought we'd do a nice little bright sunset and I'll walk you through this and I'll show you how to adjust your colors. You can use the colors that may really float your boat and use colors that you like. That's the beauty of it. Great. Well, let's get started. All right, let's do it. Um, for tools today, we're going to be using a two-inch scenery brush, a one-inch scenery brush, my number three fan brush, <coughs> large painting knife, and number two detail liner. That's basically all we're going to need to get do, do this little painting today to completion. So I'm going to take uh, some of this white base coat. This is flash, fast flow white medium. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit on the brush like this. Yep. And basically, uh, at this point, you can kind of think that you're just painting your living room wall because all you're going to do is cover the whole surface. You want to scrub it into the tooth of the canvas. By tooth, uh, we mean the little bumps and hills and gullies in that canvas surface. That's what's known as the tooth. And it just takes a very thin coat. It's going to take some elbow grease to work this in. But you want to just scrub that in. Very thin coat. You'll be able to see a little bit of a sheen on the canvas, a little shine. And that's all you really need. If you're seeing a lot of heavy brush strokes, you're getting a little too much. We can just simply wipe it off with a paper towel. Yep, just continue down here and just kind of work it right Building. in. What I do is kind of just swirl it in with a circular stroke or a figure eight just to get it spread into the canvas. And then I ultimately just finish off with overlapping horizontal and vertical strokes just to even it all out. Usually I kind of stare at it this way obliquely from the side to get the shine of light, whatever room light we have available, um, to uh, kind of check the shine on it. This is every man's painting, or every woman's painting. Um, we're not really going to draw anything on this canvas. We're basically going to make shapes with brushes. This is a very uh, free way of painting, and something that you can get a grasp of very early on, and with just a little bit of practice, you can make leaps and bounds with it. Okay, we just got a little bit of dirt off your easel there. Yeah. Does that make a big difference? Nope, that'll blend right in. You'll never see it. That's a good lesson in itself. That little smudge won't hurt a thing. All right, and is this coverage okay? It's um, yeah, that looks pretty decent. Just wanted, uh, I'm just checking the shine on it as I'm bending over here. I'm just checking the, the shine and the light. That looks beautiful. Great. See if we could stop right now and call this winter blizzard. That's a pretty big blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow pale. Mm -hmm. Work it into the brush so there's no streaks or chunks in it. And do, I just do I, so you don't even have to wash the... Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Nope. Um, I'm actually relying on that white, the residual white that's in the brush to kind of tone this down a little bit. Okay. And it should also thin it a little bit. Too. It'll also thin it a little bit. Um, at this point, the paint is still pretty pasty, which is a good thing um, because we're going to put more paint on top of this. Right. So you want to get a value. Value means how light or dark a color is. You want to get a value that you like. You can go a little more light and pastel. You can go a little bit uh, darker and richer with it. Usually I mix the color like this and get the color, the first one that I'm going to use. And then I'll sneak down and grab my fan brush and take just a little touch of that color mm -hmm. on my fan brush and mat it together. Okay, so just 
yep. working into the bristle. Mm -hmm. You're a natural, Mike, I can tell. <laughs> and then uh, going yep. both, both on both sides with yep. the fan brush. All we're going to do is just a little bit of a guideline with this. Okay. Um, compositionally, they always recommend never split your canvas equally from top to bottom. Okay. So I'm thinking there's going to be a horizon line here somewhere. So maybe if dead center on this canvas is about here. This is a 12 by 16, so the 8 inch mark is probably about there. I'm going to come down maybe an inch or two below that and just draw myself a little bit of a reference line. Okay. That's not anything that's critical. We're just drawing ourselves a map. I can get anywhere if I have a map and it tells me where to go. This is just kind of laying it out for us. Is that all right? That Ye yep. That's just a guideline at this point. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to come up above that with this scenery brush. And I'm going to turn it at a side angle like this using it horizontally. And I'm just going to take this color and stretch it upward and just let it kind of disappear. You'll see if I use a little less pressure as I go higher, it picks up more of that white base coat, just kind of blends off. Just goes straight up towards the top. Mm -hmm. That's going to be our lower sky and part of our horizon. All right. So. And then as I get higher up, I'm just lessening. Yep, lighten the pressure and just let it blend away. Oh, okay. And you'll see it just kind of disappears because we're going to melt another color from the top down oh, all right. into that. So it's color. like driving over a curb. If there's no curb there and there's a little bit of a ramp, it's easier to get over. If we leave a hard edge there, it's like trying to drive up over the curb. There's a bump. <laughs> Dangerous drive to Wilson <laughs> Bigford. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm going to take a little more of the same color. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking this is going to be sky, and uh, below this horizon line, I'm going to leave a little sliver of white there for the time being, just as a reference mark, just so I know where it is. That's still my horizon. Okay. I'm coming below that, and I'm going to do the same thing, only in reverse. I'm going to work horizontally. I'm going to bring this down and just let it kind of blend in the opposite way. Yep, absolutely. Just in reverse. This is kind of fun, Mike. It is kind of fun, Wilson. I'm, I'm at my best when I can show people how to paint. I'm turning people on to painting. I love to, I love to show people how to do this. Well, believe me, I'm turned on. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, I guess. Okay. All right. All right. See how easy that is? That was pretty easy. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, cadmium red. Now, the cadmium red is very strong as opposed to the the yellow we just used. So a so little bit. Grab a little bit at a time till you see where you're headed with it. Now I'm actually mixing it into some of the yellow on the brush. So it's going to yield kind of an orangey color, um, peachy, that sort of thing. If I want it more intense red, I just simply add a little more red to it. This is going to be part of your sky color. So color is a totally personal issue with everybody. My favorite color is blue. Maybe yours is red and you're going to want to scream some red on here. I don't know, but just basically you want to get a color you like. And I'm guessing it's pretty important to make sure it's evenly distributed through yeah. the brush. Yeah. So I'm making sure there's no real clumps of unmixed color in right, the brush. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay. And I'm just going to take it like that. I'm going to come in not all the way to the top because I'm going to put some blue up there eventually. But I'm going to come through like this. And I'm going to weave it down. Now, I'm envisioning, uh, let me show you what I've got in mind here. Um, don't draw yours on here like this. I'm just going to show it for the camera's sake. But I'm seeing some trees down here. so. I'm going to have a tree line there, so I don't want to lose all of the yellow. So obviously, I don't want to bring this red all the way down. I want some yellow above those darker tree line, that tree line when it comes into play. So I'm going to bring this down. Notice I'm kind of coming in at an angle. Mm -hmm. It's very boring just to put a band of color across here straight. Right. So I kind of bring it down like this. Now watch this carefully. This is the important part. I'm going to bring it down until it starts overlapping into the yellow. And from there, then I'm just going to take the corner of the brush there's very little paint on it at this point. I've knocked all the paint off it up here. Just doing some and I'm just going to kind of roll, twist and turn, almost like a little figure eight. I'm creating little cloud shapes. These are going to look very coarse and brush marked at first, but we're going to come back and soften them. This is still very wet because of that base coat. The reason we put the base coat on there is to allow blendability and achieve those soft edges. So I'm just going to kind of very light touch with that corner of that brush. Okay. So now we're going to come in from this side down. Mm -hmm. If you wanted, you could go the other side down. doesn't matter. I just don't want to go straight across. Okay. So we're just not going straight across. So we're going to... Yep. Straight is boring. 